Attention! Listen up! The biggest mistake Yuktabania has made in their blitz attack is that it had failed to sink any of our aircraft carriers. We'll evacuate all intact carriers to our inland sea, then use them as a base to rebuild our counter strike force. You've been called to service and a very important operation, people. Keep that in mind out there. Today at 1500 hours, three carriers from the 3rd Ocean Naval Fleet will rendezvous at Eglin Straits. These carriers are the Vulture, the Buzzard, and the Kestrel, which has successfully escaped from Port St. Hewlett, thanks to your help. Your mission is to coordinate with the Kestrel and provide top cover for all carriers during the rendezvous. Should you encounter enemy attack, defend the three carriers at all costs. The situation is fluid. So be sure to choose an aircraft with good defensive capability against both air and ground-based threats. It was nothing. Easiest mission in the world. That's what it was supposed to be. It wasn't just us, but everyone they could get their hands on. General mobilization. Our planes filled the sky like a huge aluminum cloud. There was no way the enemy could attack. The queens of the ocean made it to the inland sea. We've got it made in the shade now. This is Thunderhead. We've arrived outside the range of enemy air attack. Permission granted to return to your assigned bases in sequence. For the return trip if required. Hold above the carrier for the tanker aircraft. Everyone's starting to leave! Can we go yet? Mordog Squadron, I told you to wait for the tanker plane above the carrier. I swear, man. Hey, what is that? Is my radar on the fritz? It's showing up on mine, too. Where'd it come from? How come the morons at Thunder Blockhead didn't notice it? Yo, kid! You have to call him Captain now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you think we ought to report this? The enemy approaching! All units, return to your combat air patrol stations! Protect the carriers! We have three carriers! Don't let them sink even one! Chopper engaging! Archer, engaging! Edge, engaging! We'll take care of them ourselves. I can't take off! Shoot down those enemy planes for me! Okay, I'm coming. Hold on! Hurry and launch the carrier jets. Come for reinforcements! Good kill! Visibility is poor. It's the perfect time and place for a surprise attack. I can't help but feel like everything's working against us. Come on, hurry! Get me up there! Come on, I can do this! I've been through a real battle before! Fox 2! Fox 2! Bandit, shut down! How did the enemy know when to attack? Something strange here, but I'm not sure what. Is that what an enemy attack is usually like? This is the aircraft carrier buzzard. Missile strike off our bow. Severe shock waves. All right, direct hit. Great shot the enemy down. Watch out for the reefs. They're too far. We can't make it. Hold your fire until the enemy's within range.
battle damage. Stay on course and stick with the mission. Enemy planes approaching the carrier. Fox 2! Target hit! They're moving in a straight line. Just shoot and you'll hit them. Engage the enemy out of range. Keep our defensive line intact.
Kestrel. Ballistic missile incoming. A ballistic missile? Where'd they launch that from? The enemy attack squadron has withdrawn from the area. The aircraft carriers Vulture and Buzzard were sunk by a powerful burst missile attack. According to hydrophone data analysis, we have determined that the attack was carried out by the Sinfaxi, a Yuktobanian underwater attack carrier. The specs of this ship are unknown, but its existence confirms that the advanced shipbuilding efforts of the Yuktobanians have been going on unabated since the previous war. The Synfaxi is a serious threat to our objectives. Emergency transmission from Central. Our army has decided to deploy the military power of the Arkbird to neutralize the grave threat posed by this new enemy submarine. We set off for the northern region to refuel. This place is paradise compared to what's further ahead. Beyond our destination lies the closed gate to Nord Belka. Fifteen years ago, the Belkans set off seven nuclear bombs there to stave off the advancing Allied forces, entombing themselves in the frozen valleys to the north. That bit of history should have been enough of a lesson for us all. The seven Belkan cities near the gate were vaporized and the local area is still highly radioactive. Our landing point was in the state of North Osu, formerly a haven for Belkans, but now entrusted to Osu. If we refer to it by that name in front of the local area, 
I'll put a scowl on his face and tell you that this is South Belka. Higher Lark meant a lot to us. Our flight training took place here on this airfield. On the base, we were surrounded by junior cadets, eager to hear war stories. The newspaper article about us, written by that journalist Jeanette, made it here faster than we did. Somewhere along the line, we had become the most experienced pilots in the entire world. Us, Captain Bartlett's natives. We were directed to take these inexperienced pilots back with us to Sand Island when we returned. You said it. These pilots had only a tenuous grasp of flying, much less mid-air refueling, so we had to land at every base along the way. I can't believe we have to send them off to guard the western coastline. An SSTO craft launch facility lies to the east of our current location, McNeely Air Force Base. The facility was a collaborative project between Osea and Yuktabani. It was built to be a bridge to outer space with a mass driver 7.5 miles in length. Our radar has detected several planes from a Yuktabanian squadron approaching the facility from several directions. The facility is currently conducting pre-launch operations for an SSTO craft. The base commander will provide you with further orders. This is the commander of McNeely Air Force Base. All units, including those refueling at this base, are now under my command. Engage the incoming enemy. All untrained pilots are barred from taking off. Those guys are still kids. Ten minutes to launch. Commencing countdown. I remember this space center well. The mass driver was built by Osea and Yuktabania as part of their collaborative efforts to construct an international space station. Our anti-war president used the surplus funds that came from cutting the defense budget to build it. Is that the art bird? The Ark bird. A white bird built as the first step toward the realization of the space station project. Now it's left its orbit and is just low enough to graze the atmosphere. It's coming down to pick up the laser cannon they're about to launch. They were building a bridge of peace that would span into outer space. Not anymore. The machinery meant for this peaceful mission was about to be used for our counterattack. Hey, listen. Yes? Isn't that thing supposed to work like a satellite? Why did it climb down all this way? It's a maneuverable orbiting spacecraft. I know that. I'm just saying, if the system uses atmospheric friction to change its orbit, then wouldn't that make it pretty hard to defend itself? Hmm, I guess it'd be in trouble if someone started firing at it right now. Yeah, so shouldn't it be higher up then? Continue countdown. Three minutes to launch. Hold the countdown. Enemy incoming. This is the Base Air Defense Command. The enemy has a large formation of transport planes escorted by a squadron of fighters. They're conducting an air assault to capture this base. What? They're actually planning to invade Osea? If we shoot the parachutes before the tanks detach, we'll smash them into the ground. You with me? I guess we don't have any other choice. I can't believe that's our strategy. 
Let's all do our jobs and see this through to the very end. That is all. Weather team, roger. Flight control team, roger. Guidance team, roger. I can't shoot them all down! You'll do fine. Stay calm and you won't miss. Seal off D-block. Nobody's left in there, right? What about the final check on the remote measurement units? Ah, uh, sorry sir. Remote measurement units check complete. Guidance team reporting. Our launch window will close in a few minutes. Have faith in our fighter pilots. Don't rush your final checks. We're being pushed back, little by little. Four minutes to launch. Hold them off till then. Four minutes? We won't last that long! I want you to ensure all comm lines stay open. We've got it covered, sir. Three modes of communication. Wired, wireless, and runners. My plane can't keep up with them! Missile trajectories detected! Moving to intercept! Whoa, that was close. Come on, we can't waste any more time. Be safe here. Calm down. Flight control, your job is done. Evacuate the area immediately. We can't have any mistakes here. We're staying. Kid, is the launch facility safe? I can't tell from here. Ah, good. I'll continue the operation. Three minutes to go! Check. All stations, go over everything one last time. Guidance, navigation, flight control, telemetry, communications, flight dynamics. Do we have a go or no go? All systems go from all team leaders. Proceeding with launch. Checkpoint 1. Passing checkpoint 2. 
Passing checkpoint three. Mass driver hit by cruise missile. STO status report. Everything's clear. All systems are go. Yeah, I'm seeing it now. It's a beautiful sight. This is great. Observation room reporting. The SSTO is climbing smoothly. Congratulations. <laughs> The white bird rose up once again, laser cannon in its wings. It was a moving sight. In my heart, though, I wished it didn't have to be used in war. None of them found out why the enemy targeted the base until much later. Of course, by that time, it was too late. We prevented the Yuktobanian army from capturing the launch facility. The SSTO launch was successful. The SSTO docked with the Arkbird, which had descended into the upper atmosphere, and successfully transferred a laser weapon module over to the craft. All aircraft with the 108th Tactical Fighter Squadron and the Sand Island Detachment returned to base as soon as rearming and refueling operations are complete.